remember Kmart, the tracks? Kmart tracks? Yeah. Oh, uh, Kmart's. I just started taking the S off Kmart's. Kmart. Kmart. Was Kmart. Within the last few years, it's a Michigan thing. Like Target? What do y'all call it? Targets. I do. And like, is it Myers or Meyer? What's Meyer? We don't have that in the West. Myers. Like targets. We've just put an S on everything. Like it's possessive, like, I don't know, there might be some guy named Kmart. And it's his place. It's, his place. it's Kmart's. Yeah. That was a very grammatically correct way of explaining that. Man, I've known you for 20 maybe years now, you know. And, um, that's crazy. Yeah, that's, that is crazy. Time flies. Time flies, but DOC told me once you were writing to a beat. And he's like, he watched you and he watched you write it. And he said you went in the studio and you start spitting a verse. And then I think you left whatever it was you wrote. And he was like, man, I couldn't believe this dude wrote that, spit it, killed it. And then I went to go see what it was. He left a piece of paper, what he wrote. And he said you wrote your rhymes. It was all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. A, in a circle or something. Yeah. What was that? Because because what there's two reasons. Okay. A is because if anybody ever finds it, they're not gonna be able to decipher the puzzle. Okay. But also really where where that that helps with that, but really where it comes from is when I'm getting ideas, I have to write a couple words down right away. Wherever they're at, on the, it doesn't matter. I just have to get them out before I forget them. Mm -hmm. These are the thoughts. <laughs> you know, these words are connecting with these words beautifully right here. Yeah. And this is a fucked up thought. <laughs> and I probably shouldn't say this, but it, it's so fucking fucked up <laughs> that, you know, people are going to know I'm joking. Mm -hmm. I hope. Maybe not. I don't know. many times over the years. What I would see doesn't look like it's looking right now. At that time, it just seemed like Detroit was just kind of struggling. You know, we claimed bankruptcy in 2013. I feel like there is a new energy right now and we're definitely on the upswing a little bit. Detroiters feel like they're, they're kind of the underdog. Yeah. Like people look at us like we're kind of the underdog. It's it's almost that it's fighting spirit or something, you know. Mm -hmm. It's that, that that whole concept, Detroit versus everybody. That's kind of yeah. That's it, kind of where that's that's the attitude of you know. It, it just I don't know. It's always felt like that. I remember coming up, you know, in the in the in the battle scene. It was very. It, it was very. It was dog eat dog, and I will tell you why. When you get on that mic, you got like two to four bars and you better impress you know what i'm saying or you get booed like you need to prove yourself or we're gonna call bullshit bullshit Downtown was like a source of opportunity, but a lot of Detroiters, they didn't live downtown. It seemed like they lived outside of downtown. Detroit is a big city, so you can still be in the city, but on the outskirts of it, or you could be downtown, but it spreads out. Who was the artist back then that, that were like the local heroes? Dilla. Dilla? Dilla, Slum Village. Damn, man, I, man, I remember those days too, man. Proof, Proof had really started making a name for himself. It was a weird time in my life. I remember something fell through and I was super down and I hadn't wrote a rhyme in probably three months. I was living upstairs in the attic that we turned into a bedroom at Kim's mother's house, right? And I get a call from Proof and he's like, yo, what are you doing? I'm like, nothing, man. I'm just about to go to work. And he's like, yo, you need to come down to the shop tomorrow. 
I hadn't even wrote anything. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't even have anything. And then I'm like, all right, I'm going to have to write something. So I remember going to work and thinking of the rhymes and then trying to learn it. And he was like, he, he basically explained to me, he was like, I said, yo, I don't know if I'm ready for that, man. And he was like, look, you come down. I'm telling you, I'm running this place now. He was like, you come down. I'll shut it down. Just have a few people in here. Rap in front of them. If you don't like it, bounce. You know, leave. Don't You don't have to come back. And I was like, all right, cool. I was writing in the mind frame of every bar needs to have something that's going to get a reaction. Every bar. Because if I'm in front of the crowd, I'm going to get booed if I don't come with it. You know what I'm saying? So, so that's kind of how in that in that same kind of spirit yeah. or that same kind of mentality is kind of how I still write today uh -huh. multi-syllable rhyming uh -huh. is kind of the thing I got addicted to and when you start thinking of like whole sentences that rhyme with each other uh -huh. but in order to make that rhyme and do that sometimes you might be pushing the envelope a little bit yeah you know, but that's why I've always been just like, you know, freedom of speech, man. There's a parental advisory, uh -huh. you know, it, 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 listen. If you if you don't want to listen, turn it off. Don't yeah. buy it. Don't listen. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Like, I mean, but it's yeah. hip hop. That's hip hop, man. You talk about writing that perfect uh, search for that perfect verse. Yeah. Yeah. That, have you found it? Uh, I any, mean, the, any verses you wrote, you feel like it'd be... I, I, I'm gonna be 100% honest. Yeah. I'll keep it 100 right now. I feel like I felt this way for a long time. I've always been chasing the Marshall Mathers LP yeah. because I know that that captured a moment. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Like it's kind of like a time capsule when I look back at it. The, the the times that it was back then and the turmoil that my life felt like was happening. Shit was happening so fast. I was spiraling out of control and I had a lot of rage. When people say they miss the old M and M, I feel like it's probably that. You yeah. miss the rage and you miss me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't have the rage anymore that I used to have, but I still have the exact same passion. Sometimes it doesn't always come out the right way. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's just like, oh, what the fuck is that? And then, <laughs> well, take a pause, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, who are you? Like, I don't know who I'm competing with, but I just want to be... There's a lot of great rappers. There's a lot of great artists. There's a lot of great rappers coming up in this generation now that it's like, I'm watching it and I'm loving it. And just the competitive spirit in me wants to keep up with the best of the best. You know what time it is, nigga, watch that. Like Shinola, you'll get clocked. Like, okay now, it's the first round. I'ma apply pressure. I'ma let you pick one more, the two, two. Blazer, nigga, that's Clyde Drexler. I got him back to back, champ, I'm better. That's two rockets ringing, be even dreaming I collide with you. <laughs> nigga, I stretch you. You can either ride stretch you or get tied between two cars and let the ride stretch you. Play your cards right. You know win, lose, or draw. Ooh, no, I deck you. You a joker. You common. You ain't sick. You a common cold. I'm calm and cold. It's just different. A Floyd punch to a Drake song that hook different. When that forest hitting you, it's forest with Cause I wonder on the set, bitch, and it look different. Nigga, welcome to the end of this. You can watch me go ape on my gorilla shit. That's animal penmanship, that chinchilla fits. It's magic, the bars is average and ten cents. Come get a dime, nigga. If I get better with time, why do you whine, nigga? I'm trying to press my buttons, but I decline, niggas. Shit, I blind, niggas. Boy, I got more shine than most of these sign niggas. Go ahead and step, brother, A5A. -A. I can tell you about the game. I got the play-by-play. -play. Baker's man, yeah, you hear about the cakes I slay. My shooter's dirty and hairy, nigga. Make my day. Yeah, planet dope is the antidote for all that bullshit that your man promotes. I can make you a vegetable while busting your cantaloupe. No, elephants don't run with the antelopes. You see, it's just the law of the land. I do all that I can to not brawl with your man. I got it all in my hands. If I draw it and spray it, put your jaw on your fam. Godzilla, and I keep getting calls from Japan. They get the voicemail, yeah, it's a bother. My LA niggas swing bats for me, it's the Dodgers. I don't play with people's kids, go get your father. I made a living off of being nice, I'm Mr. Rogers. Man. I said, I said one line smoke them, no hookah sticks. You know how I do this shit, I ain't new to this. You see how I maneuver this, that Thule spit, your medulla split. I'm in here fucking this round up like I'm shooting bricks. Who do this this? I'll let it dump from the sky like Uda shit. 
You were rookie with no balls. You knew that there was some doodles here. You the one eye cut. How has Detroit informed you as a person on a larger picture of the, of the country as a whole? Just being from Detroit? You yeah. mean in a hip hop sense? Just as a whole, in a, even in a social sense. If we're talking about hip hop for a second, okay. I think that one of the great things about being from Detroit is just, we just, we, we, I don't think in the very beginning when hip hop first started coming about, I don't think we really knew who we were yet mm -hmm. as far as what's gonna be our style, what's gonna be our, you know, sound, what is gonna be this, you know what I'm saying? What, what are we gonna be? I think especially back then, we used to think like, man, nobody comes to Detroit. Yeah. Nobody, they look at us like a ghost town, you know what I'm saying? We wanna be somebody, we wanna fucking, we wanna stand up, we wanna be, that was always the thing back then too, was put Detroit on the map. Everybody wanted to put Detroit on the map because we felt like, yo, no one's listening to us. You know, and nobody takes us serious. You see, like, you know, if you go to New York and you're a Detroit MC, what it would seem like back then is you probably would get dissed. Yeah. Just being from Detroit, didn't matter how good you were. I mean, I remember when you did White America, somebody from your point of view being white, pointing out the injustices we see in the country. What Untouchable, you said some things in that song that really made me go, man, I never even heard anybody say this. When, and, well, I'm paraphrasing, but when you said sometimes I'm embarrassed to be white, you yeah. know, what, what does that mean? Like, I've, I've never heard someone say that. Because I feel like, okay, when, at the time, one of the, the things that inspired that song was there was a time a couple of years ago, if you remember this, that you would turn on the news and literally every other day it was a black man getting shot by police and killed. And I remember seeing the thing where Michael Slager, the cop, shot Walter Scott in the back. He pulled him over for the taillight being out or whatever. When Walter Scott started running, he's like 50 some feet away from him. And when you see him shoot him in the back and the dude, thank God that the dude had the camera, right? And you watch him walk up and place that taser. He's already got his story in his head. You know what I'm saying? And I'm on the phone calling Paul like, yo, did you see this shit again? I would just go off like 45 minutes on the phone talking about it in uh, Philando Castile. Like just re trying to tell you, like I I have a gun. I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like I have a gun. I have a license to carry this, and getting shot. What's up with the weather in Detroit, man? Is it always like 30 below? Right now it's 30 below and it's okay. hot. And it's hot? Yeah. It goes down to like 460 below or something. All right. Our record temp was probably 620 below. Okay. So y'all beat out Antarctica? Probably. Probably. Okay. You've been all around the world. You could live anywhere you want, but you still have a presence here. You still have a home in this area. Yeah. Why? 
I'm very much a creature of habit. I feel like this is what I know, and I don't really know anything else. I mean, I've been, obviously, to a lot of places, but this is, to me, home. It's just home. The spirit, the people here, everything is, is just what I love. Y'all got a symbol to represent the Detroit spirit, right? Oh, the fist? The fist, right? Yeah, the Joe Lewis. Yeah. The Joe Lewis fist. We've been kicked around too fucking long, so now we want to use our voices. It's incredible. Do you feel like you've accomplished your dreams? You know, there's aspects of it where you're like, I literally gave up my life for this shit. I put my life into this. Studied this game inside out. Every single aspect of it, every single everything. All it is, is a stage. And you just walk out on that stage and say your words to them. Hip-hop hasn't really been around long enough to know how long somebody can actually go for. It. 